It's almost 26 minutes after 6 now. So your kids complain about the new healthier meals at school. They just aren't tasty. Or maybe more kids are packing lunches full of sugar and salt. Oh, well, many schools are seeing a drop in the numbers they serve. Sharon is actually bucking that trend, but still falling short in one department. This is the homemade bread stuffing for a Sharon High School tradition called mock duck, a turkey gravy dish served here for decades. Now they make it so it meets the Obama lunch guidelines. We're mixing it up. We're going back to more hot meals, more meatloafs and uh, stuffed shells and uh, stuffing with the mashed potatoes and the gravy. And the kids are just, they're loving it. Alice Conley's a licensed dietitian with years of experience preparing nutritious nursing home meals. Today for schools, she calls it a numbers game. Calories, salt, and sugar balanced against the number of kids who may stop buying lunches altogether if they don't taste good or look right. How much do you worry about what it looks like? It's all about presentation, really? <laughs> yes. especially to the kids. Dawn Ruberger spends her morning preparing the a la carte salads and fresh fruit. At $3, it's more expensive than the $1.35 hot lunch but there's no doubt it meets the nutrition number game. All this fruit has to be weighed because it can't be more than a certain amount. It'll be 13 ounces. When you taste it, the strawberries, they're sweet. No sugar. But treats like homemade apple crisp aren't off limits completely. Because twice a week, you can have a grain-based dessert, and there is grain in these cookies. They're 190 calories a piece. While it's a challenge to balance kids' tastes and high nutrition, the toughest balancing act for Alice is the budget. For all this stuff that they put into place, they give me six cents. Give me 40 cents. Give me 40 Make it, make it count. You mean six cents per, per meal? Per meal to make all these changes. I need more money to make this realistic. Yeah. You know, schools are really, really struggling. Even though kids in Sharon bought 5,000 more meals this March compared to last, the numbers that matter most aren't adding up. Once she pays workers, utilities, and food costs, Alice expects to be $100,000 short of breaking even this year. The USDA put all the regulations in place, but they didn't, they didn't project the cost of the food rising. You know, it used to be that you gave the kids three-quarter cup of fruit or vegetable, and now you're giving them, like at the high school level, two cups. Now, so far, Alice says she hasn't had to ask for extra money from the general fund from the Sharon District, but they have had to break into their savings account that was built up years ago through the cafeteria program. But that money, Alice says, is running out. Now, I talked with other districts like Canfield, which also has a similar savings account and admits they, too, are dipping into that by as much as $20,000 a year to break even. It's a situation that's caused some school districts to hire management companies to run their cafeterias, which in many cases has turned out to also cost extra money. Dan?